the reading should be right here. Okay. Right. okay. Can you, I bring you, this? Yeah, sure. Do whatever you want. Okay. Uh, but this, I mean, this is what we have, but you have the same thing. Yeah. And it's easier to read and everything, so that's great. Yeah. And then you give your reading, just as it says there, everything is marked up beautiful. And then on the way out, you know, no need to wait on to finish up. Then, you know, you just, okay, you're done. And then you turn and you go back and out the same way you came. Good morning and welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral. 
As we begin this memorial mass, we invite you to rise and to join in singing our entrance hymn number 698 in the hymnal, number 698 on eagle's wings. much at home here at America's Parish Church, St. Patrick's Cathedral. I'm uh, Cardinal Timothy Dolan, and as you know better than I do, it's here at St. Patrick's Cathedral where people come to thank God with a smile, and here folks also come to ask God's help and mercy, often with a tear. And we've got a bit of both this morning, this morning of the Memorial Mass for our beloved Bernie McGurk. A love and sympathy to you, dear Carol and, and Brendan and Melanie, family and, and John and the WABC family, the legion of people who considered Bernie a friend. I, I didn't know him that well. Um, you all sure knew him a lot better than I did, but what I knew of him I sure appreciated. And I feel like I know him because I've heard so many magnificent stories about him, many of which could not be repeatable in church. Um, uh, since, since his sad passing a number of weeks ago. So thanks for being here, everybody. We thank God for him. We ask the Lord's mercy upon his soul. And yes, we smile and we shed a tear. You're very welcome. You all know the very Reverend Enrique Salvo, who's the rector here at St. Patrick's, who's our celebrant, and Father Damien O'Connell, who's going to preach uh, uh, this morning. So thank you all. Thank you, Hermes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear sisters and brothers, as we begin these sacred mysteries, which we will offer for the soul of, of, of Bernie and, and all of your, his family and friends, that you may be filled with strength during this time, let, let us begin by recalling our sins and asking our Lord to grant us his peace, his mercy, and his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to yourself. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, who have strengthened us by the mystery of the cross and promised us a share in the mystery of your Son's resurrection, mercifully grant, we pray, that your departed servant Bernard may be gathered into the company of your chosen ones through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And you may be seated.
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. But the righteous man, though he die early, will be at rest. For old age is not honored for length of time, nor measured by number of years. But understanding is gray hair for men, and blameless life is ripe old age. There was one who pleased God and was loved by him, and while living among sinners, he was taken up. He was caught up, lest evil change his understanding or guile deceive his soul. For the fascination of wickedness obscures what is good, and roving desire perverts the innocent mind. Being perfected in a short time, he fulfilled long years, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he took him quickly from the midst of wickedness. Yet the people saw and did not understand, nor take such a thing to heart, that God's grace and mercy are with his elect, and he watches over his holy ones. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility, and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to babies. Yea, Father, for such was thy gracious will all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. All of us here at the cathedral, all the staff of the cathedral, want to express to Carol and Melanie and Brendan our deepest sympathy and our prayers. A wise man once said, from quiet homes and first beginning, there's nothing worth the wear of winning. But, the, but laughter and the love of friends. Hundreds of years before that wise man, another man, wiser, 
said, I tell you a mystery. The dead will be raised incorruptible. And even before that, the wisest of all men, the one who is the incarnation of our God, spoke these words. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. It has been said of this wisest of persons, Jesus of Nazareth, that the way he built the kingdom of God was no less than by making friends. Consider only a few of his friends, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, Matthew the tax collector, the woman at the well, blind Bartimaeus, and Peter and John. What is more simple and what is more demanding than making true friends? Friendship is one of life's greatest joys, and at the same time, friendship makes mutual demands on friends. Friends must be tolerated, must be tolerant, compassionate, self-giving, loyal, and able to make us laugh. Friendship also is a risk. There's risk of disappointment, discouragement, loss. All of you here today in this sacred place are friends of Bernard McGurk. Some here knew him personally, some only as a radio personality. Some worked with him. Some were more than friends. And some of you, Carol and Melanie and Brendan, loved him dearly, and your lives were intertwined with him. All of us will miss him. Coming from a devout Catholic family, Bernard McGurk would have learned early on to say the rosary. That prayer starts with the Apostles' Creed and the words, I believe in God. And that creed ends with, I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. The words of that creed are the bedrock of our faith in God, the strong support of our hope in meeting again those we love, who have gone to God before us, and the underlying motive for our risking making true friends. Now is the time to fall back on the truth of our faith and to live in the hope of the resurrection. For since Christ himself is risen, no suffering is wasted, No sacrifice is unnoticed, and no love is ever lost. It was a great American poet who said, Alas for him who hath not learned in hours of faith the truth to flesh and sense unknown, that life is ever lord of death, and love can never lose its own. And now let us stand and ask our Heavenly Father to help us with all of our needs and especially for the soul of Bernard. In baptism, Bernard received the light of Christ. Receive him into the glory of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Our brother Bernard was nursed at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. 
Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. Those who trust in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in his expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. Let us stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to, our, to God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifices in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May both our prayer and offering be pleasing to you, O Lord, that your servant Bernard, for whose salvation they are offered, may gain through them the fullness of your redemption, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
and let us kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Bernard McGurk, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Bernard, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Patrick and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, and the, the power, power, and, and the, the glory, glory are, are yours, yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacrifice of your church, we pray, O Lord, benefit the soul of your servant Bernard, so that he who received the sacrament of Christ's mercy may enter his company together with your saints. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And now, at this moment, we are going to have uh, the, the eulogies. So you may be seated. And we invite Mr. Bill O'Reilly to give the first eulogy. On behalf of the McGurk family, Carol, Melanie, Brendan, on behalf of John Casamitidis and Margot, I thank everybody for coming to show respects to Bernie McGurk today. It's very nice of you to do it on a work day, take your time out to show your affection for a good man. So I'm going to share a few uh, words with you today uh, because McGurk, as I always call them, because that's what guys who think they're tough do. They call people by their last name. Um, we had a shared life experience. First of all, isn't this cathedral magnificent? It was built by, uh, mostly by Irish immigrants in the 1870s. In 1947, Angela and William O'Reilly were married here. And that's why I'm standing right here. This is a tremendous setting, a spiritual setting, but also a cultural New York setting. So as you may know, uh, Bernie McGurk's parents came from Ireland. And uh, the Irish are a unique race. I think I can say that with certainty. Many of us are born with anxiety because uh, of our ancestral homeland. We don't know who's going to invade next. So there's this kind of inner, things are going to go wrong, Murphy's Law kind of mentality. But that's a good thing because we Irish have to overcome it or we sink. Now, growing up in the South Bronx, Bernie was uh, in a tight-knit family, and the family had values. And Bernie went to Catholic school, Cardinal Hayes, and then St. Vincent's, Catholic, Catholic, Catholic. And as Bernie might say, sometimes life can be challenging. But that ethic and that upbringing instilled in McGurk values. Values. Values that are common to the Irish. Honesty. Loyalty. Respect for those who deserve respect. But Bernard McGurk did not suffer fools easily. And there are many fools. We must be charitable, but we must be honest. So McGurk basically lived the life I lived. Ethnic home, Catholic education, rough streets, drove a cab, I drove a cab, worked hard. Mother was a teacher, father was a mason, worked with his hands. Wasn't a lot of deviation from that. A pretty clear pathway of life. This is what we do. This is what we do. And the testimony is right here, today. What Bernard, 
McGurk managed to do was gain the respect of a lot of people. So I remember, uh, maybe it was eight, nine years ago, I was looking around to do a, another segment on uh, my Fox program, and I wanted to get a couple of wise guys who were wise. There's a difference between just being a wise guy and a wise, wise guy. So I had known McGurk for a while. Uh, I met, first met him when he was uh, producing Imus. Not an easy human being, Imus. McGurk handled him pretty well. But there was one time when Imus was just hammering me. I wasn't on a radio with him. I wasn't on the phone. It was just he just didn't like me that day. And McGurk basically said to him, hey, Lay off O'Reilly is a national treasure. And I was listening at home and I went, whoa, <laughs> that's truth to power. I don't know if it's truth, but he's standing up to Imus, who could get a little tense now and then. All right? That always stayed with me. And what was that all about? It was about loyalty. McGurk liked me, I liked him. We had a lot in common. I mean, it was an amazing life experience that we had. You know, Irish guys, when they get together, they love to tell the upbringing stories. You know, who can, up, who can out upbring the other? Okay? So um, I was raised out in Levittown. Same thing, Irish home. And uh, we didn't have air conditioning out there. And obviously it gets a little tepid. I remember being a teenager, and I came home one time, and my father's sitting there, and I said, hey, Dad, you know, you put a couple of units in here, you know, a couple of little air. He goes, you got a fan. I said, yeah, but the fan just blows hot air on you. He goes, don't put it on. So McGurk just looked at me, he didn't have to say anything, and he just nodded like this. Shared life experience. So, I want to wrap it up by saying this. And this is to the McGurk family. Whenever in the future people think of Bernard McGurk, they're going to smile and no greater compliment can be paid to a person. And now we invite Mr. Peter King. Carol, Melanie, Brendan, it's a great uh, honor for me, a privilege to be here today. And today is a celebration of Bernie's life, and we gotta keep it that way. But yeah, look at the size of the church here, all the people that are here today. I I'm willing to bet half of them never met Bernie. And that to me was his genius, that everyone who listened to him, who followed him, thought they knew him. He was able to reach out to real people. Now let me also say, uh, keeping in uh, with admonitions from Bernie, I assure you I'll keep this short, Bernie never liked politicians to begin with, and he certainly didn't like politicians that gave long speeches. So in deference to Bernie, I will keep this brief, but I want to really get my feelings out about Bernie. I had never met a more decent guy in my life. He was, uh, to me, he was the ultimate New Yorker. And that's why, to me, it's so important that this memorial mass be said today in St. Patrick's, which really epitomizes New York. Obviously, it means more to Catholics and Irish Catholics, but it's all New Yorkers. Ed Koch used to be here for every midnight mass. People of all denominations and races come here because it really is the spirit of New York. It was built by hardworking people, and that's what Bernie was all about. He didn't look for any favors, didn't look for any privilege. He certainly never felt sorry for himself. He was out there working, doing what had to be done, and he was the ultimate loyal person. Bernie cherished loyalty. I, I guess, first started meeting Bernie back in the 1990s during the Imus days. I would see him down in Long Beach at the uh, St. Brendan's Day Parade, 
And it wasn't always easy to find him because he was in the crowd with everybody else. He wasn't out front, wasn't sitting on the dais, wasn't walking around telling you how great he was. He was there with the real people because Bernie was the ultimate real person. And today, as I look at it, as I said, so many people in, in the last few weeks have come to me and they start talking about Bernie, how bad they feel. And then it took me a while to realize they never met him. They never met him at all, but they, they, still they knew him. They, they knew the essence of Bernie McGurk, and that was to be a decent, hard-working person. Bernie never looked for favors from the day he was driving a cab to the day he died. Bernie died the way he lived, and that's by, again, being strong, being tough, not looking for sympathy, not making excuses, but being a tough guy. Nobody stood more with the police, the firefighters, the veterans, the hardworking construction workers, the blue-collar workers. Didn't matter how high or low you were, Bernie was with you if you were a good American, if you were a hardworking person, and if you're honest. You could disagree with him, and yet he would respect that so long as you were being honest with him. I know I cherish the text messages I used to get from Bernie, uh, and he, again, it was always from the heart. And again, maybe often in politics or in the media or in public life, a person has a public life, and then behind the scenes, they're not so good. As good and as friendly and as decent as Bernie was on the air, he was even better in person. I had the honor to co-host with him a number of times and to see the way he worked with the staff, to see the way he was always willing to defer to somebody else and yet always stand by his strong opinion. So to me, this is a day for a great New Yorker, a day to celebrate. And I will say again regarding politicians, when we go, we couldn't get a crowd half the size. So Bernie, you won it all the way to the end. You're the best. God love you. And now we invite Mr. Curtis Lewa. St. Patrick's Cathedral has very, very special meaning for me and I'm sure many of you. My father and mother married here before he shipped off to war. They celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary here and both had their funeral ceremonies here. So it plays a very special part in the life of the Sliwa family. And I know in the history of New York City and for many of you, but Bernard McGurk was a man's man. And what I mean by that is he took responsibility for not only caring about himself, but everybody else. He was the glue to the fabric of at times what was a dysfunctional family, which talk radio oftentimes is. He was a consigliere to many. He mentored many of the young men and women who came in all wide-eyed and bushy-tailed, but sometimes would have setbacks along the way. And he would tell them, this is just part of the course of what life is like. And he became their mentor. And with his death, Bernard McGurk becomes an example for many, many, many men. Because he was strong, he was vibrant, he was intelligent, he was a great family man. As was mentioned, he was a regular man. But he, like so many other men, did not want to deal with the reality of prostate cancer. I know, I was in that same situation. The greatest man we ever had, Rudy Giuliani, was in that same situation. Many of you have been in that same situation. It seems the tougher you are, the more resistant you are to want to find a measure to determine whether you have it or not. And I will never forget Bernard McGurk coming in and sitting with me in a separate studio and describing the symptoms that he had. And I knew I had many of those same symptoms. It was not good. And I told him, Bernie, you got to get tested. You gotta deal with this medically. You can't vacillate or wait any longer. I waited too long. 
way too long and I suffered the consequences. Luckily, I survived. So in his honor, we can all be proud that with Bernie having gone right with an easy pass through the pearly gates into the Radio Hall of Fame and obviously into a heaven that has embraced him, that there will be many men out there who will get tested as a result of Bernie not having done so. And there are many families out there who will urge the men folk in their family, go out, get the simple test. It's a prick of your finger. It's a blood test. It saves people's lives. And I know on behalf of John and Margot Katzmatidis, we will make sure that we keep the memory of Bernard Gurk alive with an annual prostate cancer run, with constant PSAs, and urging women and children, please get your men folk tested so that their lives can be saved. His sacrifice at the age of 61 will not be in vain. He had so much more to give, but you can all have solace in knowing how many lives he will ultimately end up saving. And as one man whose life was saved because I did have the test in time, I just want to say to Bernie, I'll make sure they memorialize you in the Monroe Housing Projects. They should have a plaque in your honor. I'm going to make sure that the Hayes men, a, a city institution that he went to, it is now predominantly minority, has a plaque up there to Bernie so that young men and young women can idolize him. And the most important thing at all is that we continue to commemorate and memorialize him on the greatest radio station that has ever existed, that John and Margot have resurrected themselves, WABC, which is part of our extended family. Thank you. And now we invite Mr. Bo Deedle. Good morning, everyone. So last night, I sat at my kitchen table and I tried to jot down things that I normally do. I usually talk from my cuff, but this is a little bit too important, not to mention a lot of things. First of all, Carol, I thank you for asking me to speak. I am very honored to be included. I think we go almost as far back as from when you met Bernie. So I've been around Bernie for over 37 years. And his son and his daughter, I love you guys very much. And Uncle Bo is always there. I'm a phone call away. You know, I go back, as they said, 37 years with Bernie. All the people in this church are only a small part of it. For all the years that Bernie was on the air, there are millions of people across this country that have felt Bernie, things that he says. And my whole idea about Bernie was he touched millions of people. I get text messages from all over the country about Bernie. You know, when I first learned about Bernard having this horrible disease, I called up the top guys over there in Sloan Kettering. I says, drop everything, you gotta get my Bernie in there. And I thought we could beat this thing because I feel as though we have so much technology and like Curtis just said, you got to catch it sooner than later. You know what? Since January, even though I know Bernie 37 years, since January, he became one of my closest people. We texted. We spoke on the phone. And it was, you know what? If people didn't know Bernie, he was one of the most intelligent, wittiest people I ever met. And you got to remember, when I first started on the IMA show back in 1987, Bernie was there. Yeah, I brought Joey Potts and Pans in there. I brought a lot of people in there where Bernie was laughing. The real funny part was when he put the uh, FedEx envelope on his head and he became Cardinal O'Connor. And he continued and it just went on. And I'm going to tell you something. 
Back in 2007, something happened. It seemed like, we all know what happened in 2007, it seemed like everybody was against Bernie. All his so-called friends, a lot of them, started doing the moonwalk. But you want to know something? Bernie became stronger and stronger. And I'm telling you right now, when Imus turned on him, I went right into Imus' face and I said, you're a fool, because he is you. He made your show. And he did bring him back. Not because I threatened him, because he realized Bernie was Don Imus' stone backup person. <laughs> Would With the show coming back on radio and Fox News, uh, my friend, and I don't, uh, I'm not ashamed to say, Roger Ailes was my friend. And Roger Ailes brought Don Imus only if he brought Bernie back. And I told Roger, I will not do the show unless Bernie's on this show, because he's the catalyst of this show. And we know one other thing, my dear friend, the bad boy. Where is the bad boy? Sid, and your wife, should be sanitized over here, Sid. What happened was Sid had his own problems, but then he shocked everyone, and he came back. His talent was beyond reproach. And then all of a sudden, this gentleman, John Katsimatidis and Margot and Chad Lopez, saw this magic in a bottle, put Bernie and Sid together, and it became number one radio show in New York, WABC Radio, because of Bernie and Sid. I'm gonna tell you something, Bernie. I'm talking to Bernie now. I know, Bernie, you fell in love with Sid, and Sid fell in love with you. After Bernie was diagnosed, things started to get really bad. After January, my texts and talks with Bernie became more often. And he would tell me about the pain and the sickness he was going through. Chemotherapy every week almost. It was, it was unbelievable. You know what he kept saying? Bo, I'm going to beat this. One night in February, I was up in Rayos, and all of a sudden this guy all dressed in red that I knew, his eminence, the Cardinal was there. And I went over to the Cardinal, and who I really love, Cardinal Egan, and I said, you know, my friend Bernie's very sick with the cancer. He goes... Tell Bernie I'm going to say prayers for him. I made the Cardinal take a picture, and I sent the picture to Bernie. And I remember, Carol, he was very happy when he saw it. I said, don't worry, the Cardinal got you back, Bernie. And he was very, very happy about that. Then I tried to get to see him. I wanted to see him. He wouldn't let anybody come to see him at the house. So one day on Saturday, I started cooking my seven-hour sauce with pork chops, sausages, meatballs, Seven hours, you gotta ladle out the oil so it doesn't get too greasy, right? So I bake a pot of macaroni, and I say to Margo, I said, we're going to see Bernie. So I said to Bernie, I'm gonna leave the macaroni on your stoop. I'm not gonna come in. So I ring the bell, Carol came to the door, and Carol says, Bo, come in. And we, uh, we were able to spend some very beautiful time talking about old times. I gotta stay strong with this. I think I'm a tough guy. I ain't a tough guy when you lose your brother, okay? So then we got into the house in Long Beach and I left the macaronis and meatballs. All I kept getting was texts from Bernie. I love it, it's the best. And Carol, I'm gonna cook you a pot for you and the kids too. And then all of a sudden, when we left there, I left with Margo and we got in the car and we couldn't, I, we were, we we're both crying. She went through cancer, uh, lymphoma, so she kind of understood what Bernie was feeling with her having chemo every other week and all that. So I could go on and on, I'm not gonna go on and on, but I just wanna do one thing. The last times I communicated with Bernard, I'd just like to read a couple of texts if I could hold myself together. Uh, these were from Bernie to me and this is when I went away for a week and I didn't want to go on vacation because I felt as though I may miss my Bernie. I got, all I know is here was one text. I love you, Bo, and that the little emoji thing's four hearts. I'm in the best hands because you and Carol, and then he put five more of those emoji hearts. And here was another one. Love you, big Bo, and he curses so I can't say it. He said, setbacks happen. 
And he said, I'm already back to normal in many ways. You're a great man, Bo, and I'm honored to call you one of my greatest friends. And here was the last text that I got from my dear friend Bernie. And I don't say it easy. I've lost brothers and sisters. Bernard was my brother. And his last text from Bernie, love you, Bo. Hanging in there. Speak soon. What not? Much love and respect. And he gave me about 15 of those emoji hearts. And I'm going to tell you something. I will never forget Bernard McGurk. I love you like my brother. And God bless you. And now we invite Mr. Sid Rosenberg. This is uh, now two churches, Mike Green, just in case you're keeping score at home. First of all, to Carol, and to Melanie and Brendan, um, you know how much I love you guys, and you know how much Bernie loved you guys. And we talked an awful lot about you guys, a lot, off the air. And he, um, he was really proud of all of you. He really was. And obviously, with a grandchild on the way, um, he's going to be very happy looking down from somewhere. So congratulations to you guys, Brendan. It's surreal for me to be here at St. Patrick's. I had a, a friend who about two years ago invited me to come here on a Friday afternoon. I think Ed Randall is out there somewhere. He was actually up on, on the altar that day. And I loved it. I'm Jewish, as you know, but I loved it. I walked out of here and I felt great. I felt a lot better when I walked out than when I walked in. And so, I made it a regular practice to come back here on Fridays. So I would do the show with Bernard and the show would end and Bernie would say, let me ask you something. What is it, B? You going to church today? I said, you're not, so I am. <laughs> and I did. I kept coming back. I even got ashes here two years ago on Ash Wednesday, which was, which was amazing. It's a beautiful place. It's a place of love, and that was Bernard. I worked with Bernard back in the early 2000s when I was on the Amish in the Morning program. Bernie and I got very, very close, very close, on and off the air. And in my first book, which nobody read, which I wrote about 12 years ago, Bernard wrote at the very end of his chapter, I look forward to the day, one day, when me and Sid do our own show together. That was in 2010. And it seemed like pie in the sky. But, as luck would have it, six years later, thanks to the courage shown by Chad Lopez, that chapter from Bernard became a reality. And in January of 2016, at WABC, the Bernie and Sid show started. And it was amazing. That was the one guy I always wanted to work with, always. All those years on IMIS, we were kind of in the back. You know, it's, it's been a great point made by Bo Dito today that as talented as Don IMIS was, he was a pretty talented guy. It's a tough to get along with at times, but a pretty talented guy. And Charles McCord, very talented guy, and Rob Bartlett, and Larry Kenny, and Mike Breen, and the list goes on and on. I think anybody who worked on that show knew the, the real talent on that show and the real backbone was, in fact, Bernard McGurk. And for me to have an opportunity to work with Bernard, the Bernie and Sid show, was just amazing. And then it all started to fall apart. <laughs> all of a sudden, Cumulus was selling off stations like... We changed our underwear in the morning. PLJ was gone. The Nash Country was gone. Urban was gone. And there was me and Bernie showing up at work every single day wondering if we were going to be gone. And then came John and Marco Katsimatidis. And they couldn't have come sooner. 
they came and they revitalized not just the station, but me and Bernie felt like, wow, we have a real vehicle here. I made the NASCAR analogy weeks ago. I could always drive, Bernie could always drive, and Chad was a great pit boss, but the car sucked. We needed a real vehicle, and John and Margot provided that vehicle and gave me and Bernie the opportunity to shine in New York. And with the help of my brother, we went all the way to number one. Number one, folks, number one. You made me laugh. When my, um, when my father died two years ago, I thought I'd never feel like this again. I was wrong. He made me laugh. And when everybody else gave up on me, and there were lots of them, he never did. Never. He said, I want to work with Sid. It's been said a million times, and I'll say it one more time. Forget about the talent. He had loads of talent. He could be funny. He was the smartest guy in the room. He was just a good soul. He cared about everybody. Everybody. Like I said, when my father died, he texted and called me every day. When my daughter went to college, he was so happy for me. When my wife was sworn in by the Supreme Court the morning after Donald Trump beat Hillary Clinton, he was so happy for me. And when my son Gaby was in studio back in July and Bernie was home, really sick, he actually cried because he was so happy for me and my son who he called and gave me. For some of you folks out there that don't really know him, just listen on the radio, the point's been made, I'll make it again. If you thought Bernard McGurk was good on the radio, man, he was good. He was 10 times better in person. And I'll say it now and close with this. Bernard McGurk was the best man I've ever met. And that includes my father and some other great people. He was the best man I ever met. And for what it's worth, everybody here today should take some solace and be happy that whether you knew him or you're here today to honor him, we're all very lucky. I love you. And now we invite Mr. Chad Lopez and Mr. John Katsimatidis. Good morning. I come up here today to speak on behalf of the WABC family. But before I begin, I'd like to invite Bernie's daughter, Melanie, up to say a few words. I just want to say that I am so overwhelmed by the amount of people who are here to remember my dad. 
I'd like to say thank you to my dad's WABC family, Cardinal Dolan, and everyone at St. Patrick's. Today, he would have turned 65. He was the most talented, humble, generous, intelligent, and witty man I've ever known. Although my dad's radio show was recently rated number one in New York, he never wanted or needed the praise or accolades. He worked hard and did what he loved, and in turn, was loved, by, loved and respected by so many. My brother and I would call him Professor McGurk because everything was a teachable moment. He knew absolutely everything. He was and will always be the smartest man that I've ever known. My dad was the type of man who appreciated the little things in life. He never needed to go on vacations and didn't care about material things. He loved to bike ride on the boardwalk, go to the gym, watch the sunset with my mom, take our dogs to the beach for a run, and just sit in the basement with a beer and watch UFC fights. Those are the things that brought him the most happiness in his life. This has without question been the hardest year for myself and my family. My dad battled cancer for a full year and fought valiantly every single day. People would often say to me, your dad sounds great on the air, he must be doing well. Little did they know, he was in excruciating pain, day in and day out, but as he always did, he put on a great show. Only this year, from his bed, with a microphone in hand. My dad was a fighter, now he can finally rest. He may not be here physically, but his spirit lives on, and I have no doubt about that. Happy first birthday in heaven, Dad. I love you. I want to thank you all for coming today. I was just given word that we also have 2,500 people watching us. Like I said, I come up here to speak on behalf of WABC family. Today we feel the loss of Bernard McGurk, husband, father, host of Bernie and Sid in the morning, and our friend. Bernie loved radio and shared his life with the listeners of New York City since 1986, when he joined the many voices of the New York City Airways. He entertained millions across the country, working with Imus in the morning and his many characters which became part of radio history. In 2007, Bernie came with Imus to broadcast here at WABC. His personality from day one was infectious. His comedy, impressive. His professionalism, immeasurable. When it came time in 2018 for Bernie and Sid to be WABC's morning show, Bernie once again succeeded. And just this year has become the number one news talk show in New York. <laughs> Bernie will be missed by all that knew him and listened to him. He is the fabric of the morning show. He is the morning show. Countless people started their day with Bernie touching more lives than I think he ever realized. Those people, along with all of us here, feel the loss of Bernie every morning. He will always be our host, colleague, 
friend, father, and a loving husband. Bernard McGurk, we will miss you. And I could just see him doing this now. In the words of Bernie, because I know he's smiling down on us right now. I could see him. Happy birthday, Bernie. Nami. Thank you. John. I just want to take a few minutes in conclusion of today's and thank His Eminence Archbishop Cardinal Dolan, His Eminence, and for allowing us. Bernie was a religious man, and St. Patrick's Cathedral is at the highest level next to the Vatican for Catholics, for allowing us to have a memorial on Bernie's birthday today. And Bernie will always be a member of the WABC family and will never be forgotten. We're going to be initiating Bernie into the WABC Hall of Fame. And the number one studio, Studio A, we're going to be naming it after Bernie. And anybody walking into Studio A will always remember Bernie's name. We will never allow Bernie to be forgotten. And to me, if you mention people's names and you talk about them, you'll always be there. Thank you all for coming on this beautiful day. Thank you so much. Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. And let's ask our Blessed Mother as well that she may uh, take her son Bernard by her hands and, and, and bring her to the throne of and loving arms of the Heavenly Father. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, number 569 in the hymnal, number 569, How Great Thou Art. display. 